not, <laughs> not running in fear. What a topic. What a topic. Oh, man. This is, and I'm not an expert in um, philosophy or, I guess, psychology or emotional uh, well-being. Like, I studied history at the University of Colorado. I didn't study the hard sciences. So, you know, give me a little slack here. But I, I am uh, excited to just bring up topics like this that are a little outside of the box when it comes to just straight up training training advice or uh, nutrition and hydration advice. Yes, I'm taking out the lightest running vest in the world on my long run today. And my legs are a little sore, a little tired from yesterday's 15 mile tempo run. They actually are waking up night. I can tell they're gonna be okay, but today is a long run because of the race this weekend in New Hampshire. I don't want, I need to get a long run in this week uh, because Amsterdam is the, the end goal, but I don't want to do a long run too close to New Hampshire. And I, in an ideal world, I don't like to go back to back hard. Um, I'm realizing though in this training block, it's happening because of life, because of scheduling, and you probably have to figure out ways to get creative with your training as well as far as, okay, how am I going to squeeze in these hard efforts when, um, when life is busy and I might not be able to do the, like in my world, I love to do hard, easy, hard, easy, or even hard, easy, easy, hard. Um, that's how I love to train, but it just doesn't always play out like that. So we talk about fear today, not living in fear, um, not living in fear with our training and not being afraid to um, see what we're capable of. You know what I mean? All right, let's get this ready. And yes, I'm gonna put down a gel right now from Unived uh, before we get going and mix up. Oh boy, we're gonna take out some Morton. That's right, if I'm saying that right, M-A-U-R-T-E-N. Uh, so a special drink, I'm gonna mix it up here with 500 milliliters of water. All right, there we go, everyone. We're good. we're keeping it simple today. I am in full-on recovery mode after that run today. I got the uh, got the nutrition into me, got the hydration into me. I'm actually it's almost like I was in quite a bit of pain there in the kitchen drinking the uh, Unived recovery drink, uh, recovery mix, and uh, but sure enough, about 45 minutes later, I just started to feel good, and I'm I'm making a. By the way, I have my compressed sport uh, calf sleeves on hamstring quad and I'm in full-on recovery mode but I'm, I'm making a conscience maybe this is my tip of the day uh, after a long run try not to just sit in a chair for hours and hours or lay on the couch like I'm a believer in keep moving keep moving you, you, you'll you be able to rest when you go when you fall asleep like my legs feel so much better this is about I'm about five hours after the long run was over. Like they feel so much better because I've been moving around, doing little tasks, doing little chores, taking the trash out, all these little things to help keep the legs uh, from basically tightening up. So, okay, today's run in the Hoka Carbon Axis. I'm trying not to train or race eventually in fear, okay? And I'm gonna talk about that in a second. So today's run, 24 miles. Uh, 38 kilometers. I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna read it. 24 miles, 38 kilometers. 
640 per mile or 410 per kilometer. And after the tempo run yesterday, I was just hoping to run, I wanted to be right around seven to seven, and it was all by feel. I wanted to be at least seven to 715 per mile. I thought that's where my legs were gonna tell me, you, got, you can't go faster than that because you're tired after, your, after yesterday's run. But sure enough, um, I think the combination of, yes, using the Raid Light vest, oh my goodness, where is the bottle here? Bottle, 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 here it is. 600 milliliters uh, of the Morton uh, gel. Sorry if I'm not speaking as clearly right now. So 600 milliliters of Morton gel drink mix uh, and then 600 milliliters of water. I probably drank about uh, 500 milliliters of both. And yes, I did take a gel along the way. Uh, another gel from Unived, uh, uh, salt water taffy or salt water, no, salt. Uh, what is it? Vanilla salt something is the flavor. It was amazing, tasted amazing. And sure enough, I think the combination of all this and the Carbon X's just brought me through strong, just brought me through like nice and smooth. I think I posted on Strava, I said, just finding my groove, just finding my groove, hitting those paces. And um, yeah, I felt good. I felt good. So that is the longest long run that I will do in the training block. I won't go past 24 miles in this training block. So feeling positive about that. And yes, I should just say like the Raid Light vest crushed it, c -c 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 crushed it everyone. Like felt so secure, so in control. Like it just was, it hugged me so well and really no bouncing at all with the bottles, even when they were full at 640 a mile. So I'm, I'm so excited about this vest. Now let's talk about fear just a little bit. And uh, I'm no expert in fear, but I think it's a good topic to dive into because it's on my mind. And it was on my mind, especially two or three weeks ago. Um, I guess zooming out quite a bit. I used to think a lot and dwell a lot as I was getting into ultra running around my knees. I was just, I was fearful for my knees when I'm a 60, you know, 50 year old, 60 year old, seven, you know, you hear about people having to get knee replacements. And I guess the technology is getting really good in that department, but I'm like, I don't want to have to get knee replacements just because I'm running. Um, but frankly, at this point, I'm like, if it happens, it happens. And I've accepted the fact that I'm putting my body through a lot as a 20 and 30 year old and hopefully 40 and 50 year old. And I never want to stop running. But for some reason, like, I guess I've known some runners. That's where, you know, it's partially where it comes from. I've known some runners who have had to get knee replacements and I'm like, ah, oh, I don't want to do that. Um, so that's anyway, one little fear that I used to have a lot more so, but frankly, I'm well over that. I've gotten over it. And it's like, if it happens, it happens. But now also in the health department, as far as fear around running, certainly stress fractures. You all know the story about Cleveland and my stress reaction. And yeah, I mean, after Pikes Peak, I knew that my volume was going to increase. I knew the intensity was going to need to increase. And those two things usually could, yeah, not usually, but have in the past have led to injuries for me. Now, we're, I believe we're about 27, 28 days to go until Amsterdam. So I'm feeling good. No made, no sharp pains, no niggles, like crazy niggles. So I'm feeling good. But I must say to help alleviate that fear a little bit, I have been in certain shoes like I did today in the Hoka Carbon X's. So I have this Spenco, see that green there? So what it is, it's basically this, it's called Spenco. You see it on your screen there for spelling. And I don't use it all the time, but for higher volume, longer runs, runs where I know I'm gonna be on pavement or concrete, I slip this Spenco underneath the insole of a shoe. And frankly, this insole from Hoka in the Carbon X is a joke. Like it's, it's, there's hardly any uh, uh, cushion through this insole. So basically you cut it out, you can buy it on Amazon, buy it from your running shoe store and you buy it oversized and then you cut it out with scissors to match the, the uh, basically the size of your insole. And I think it just helps alleviate some of the pounding and yes, some of maybe the mental concern, a little bit of the fear of another stress reaction or stress fracture happening leading into Amsterdam's. Just so you know, I had to make a conscious decision two weeks ago not to train in fear. I could easily be running 70 miles a week, 80 miles a week, and probably arrive in Amsterdam pretty fit, okay? But I wanna do well, 
and I want to see what I can do. All right, so I'm not allowing that fear of injury to dictate my decision making. Now, I'm not going crazy. I've, re- I've trained at higher volume than what I'm doing right now, but I'm not, I'm not letting fear drive my desire and to run well in Amsterdam. I don't know how else to phrase it. Um, so the question of the day, how have you had to deal with fear in your training and or racing let's say you know maybe it's and it could be around any topic it could be around anxiety it could be around injuries it could be around performance it could be around um um it could be around you know competition the competition around you uh so anyway i just bring this topic up to get the conversation going down below um because it's been it was on my mind two to three weeks two two and a half weeks ago what are we at yeah about two and a half weeks ago and I just, I decided I had to make a decision and I don't think I even mentioned it to you in a vlog from two and a half weeks ago. I had to make a decision. I'm not gonna let fear dictate my training and I'm gonna go for it. And so far, we're, we're moving forward. We're moving forward, all right? All right, I love you guys. And actually, we do have a couple old vlogs where we've talked about fear in the past. So I'm gonna toss it up on the right and one on the left and both of them talk about fear and just that whole thought process of overcoming one's fears in training and racing. All right, I love you guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. See beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.